So, given the girl child education, it would help us to then understand why it is that in societies where we have not attained significant level of gender parenting in education, there is often the tendency that the women are disempowered. When they are still learning very small businesses and they are not seeing the growth that they expect. There is still a lot of hurdles that they will face getting access to markets, access to financing and technology, and the last is that women are not saving as much as they should. I know that doesn't apply to all of you here, you're all savers, right? But women outside this room don't save as much as you do. And that's the challenge. Financial discipline is critical for effective entrepreneurship. Think about technology as last sheet of the law. Originally, technology was defined as a change in nature, and it leads to that endless human need or desire to change that which is wrong, to actually deviate from the norm, to turn nature into something that can be mastered by the human nature. And that requirement by the human nature to actually make that change, as we can see, it leads to what we today call entrepreneurship. The desire to move away from the law. The desire to move away from that which is traditional. Well, the benefit of um, a seminar like this is that it enables women uh, to be in the midst of other women um, and to share knowledge. Well, I believe this um, conference is being organized at the right time. Uh, today's world is a world built on uh, collaborative partnership. Um, it's a world where there is something called the, um, the crowdsourcing of, of knowledge, of solutions. And so when women come to gatherings like this where very important topics like innovation and um, entrepreneurship are being discussed, they learn a lot of things that would enable them to overcome the hurdles, the obstacles, the constraints to their own growth. The government is always the where we want to look to as a last resort. I don't want to always think about that because ultimately the government can make certain decrees but when it comes to brass tax um, our banks for instance they are private institutions right and they are accountable to shareholders if the mindset of their owners already is not aligned with building up women then you already have a challenge even if a woman doesn't get a paid job she can become an entrepreneur but you see when the woman is not educated she's probably afraid to unleash to the next step and so today we are saying that every girl child or a female child must be educated. I know that in some families they will tell you, look, I'm not going to spend my money educating a female child. I'm going to send the male ones to school. The female child is going to get married someday. So beyond marriage, what happens? She gets married, she can't move to the next level. What happens? So I think the thing is that we must begin to have a paradigm shift on what we think about the female child. Okay? We've had to pause that special report for a really, really short time. We'll be right back. When we get back, we'll give you today's trivia question. Okay guys, it's time for us to round out our special report, but you know how we do now. I have to ask you our trivia question for today. When did Facebook open its first African office and in which country? Now, considering the fact that probably half of you are on Facebook as we speak, this should be relatively easy. We'll find out how correct you are after this. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, just with a few words of welcome. So first of all, thank you all very much indeed for coming to celebrate the launch of the UK Nigeria 2015 to 2016. It promises to be an exciting year, building new connections between our two countries in arts, education, innovation, trade and investment. The timing could not be better. Both of our countries have new governments elected earlier this year and both of those two new governments have already made numerous pledges to broaden and deepen the historically strong relationships between our two countries. I am Director of Arts for the British Council in Nigeria. My name is Connie Price and I'm the Country Director of the British Council in Nigeria. Um, so it's the launch of our UK Nigeria 2015-16 programme, which is a programme that we're launching to strengthen artistic relationships between Nigeria and the UK. The aim of the project, we've got sort of three things we're trying to do. First of all is to really build collaboration between the UK and Nigeria, so there's plenty of that, but to really scale it up in new areas, to bring new audiences. So, for example, some of our projects are geared to the general public and get them to experience the arts, maybe in a way they haven't, and in the end to also then build our relationship as two countries. Basically, I'm curious about you know the program and what it's about, and to see how UK and Nigeria can come together, um, continuous relations, how we can work together with our arts and every other thing. Basically, we're talking about unemployment, you know, year in year out. Uh, but I'm happy that indeed the creative industry, the entertainment industry, has proved the potentials in terms of creation of job in terms of solid contribution to the Nigerian economy. Well, the creative industries, of course, are art, music, fashion, design, cinema, theatre, literature, all of these sorts of things, all of which are very vibrant here in Nigeria and, of course, are very vibrant in the UK as well. And what we're really interested in is for young people in particular in all of these different industries to work together, to collaborate, both across the boundaries and the different sectors here in Nigeria, but most importantly within uh, the UK-Nigeria relationship with partners in the UK as well. <laughs> 